probably fair to say that street photography has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years. COVID has definitely had a massive effect on that. Number one, there's not as many people in the streets generally as there was maybe a few years ago. Number two, the street scenes are hugely different. The kinds of things you'd actually be able to capture are super, super different. And the vibe is very different as well. And of course, you definitely can't really be up in people's faces nearly as much as maybe you could a few years ago. Now, I'll let you in a little secret. I never really liked getting up in people's faces with a 16 mil lens and taking photos or a 24 or even a 35. I've always liked using a much longer lens for street photos. I find that I can get more of a candid shot. I like the look of it a lot more, to be honest, an 85 mil, 135, and in particular, a 70 to 200. That's what we're going to talk about right now. See, 70 to 200 is obviously a fantastic lens. It's a great all rounder. And there's an argument to be made, in fact, that it might be the best all rounder zoom lens. 24 to 70, obviously, being a very strong competitor there. And maybe that's the best. But there's no doubt in saying that 70 to 200 is a very, very good all rounder zoom lens. But is it good as a street photography lens? Can you capture good street photos? with a 70 to 200. Well, there's a few things holding it back. Sony were nice enough to send the a7 IV with the 70 to 200 G Master Mark II. Now, this is a lovely lens. I've shot really nice stuff with it that I'm really happy with. And I really like the look of the images that this is able to provide. But there's obviously a few things holding it back as a street photography lens. Obviously, it's quite big, which is fair enough. It's not particularly subtle in the way it looks. Again, fair enough, because this isn't being sold as a street photography lens. It's not something you would think of when you think of the new 7200 G Master Mark II. But it is when I think about it a little bit because I've used the 7200 to take street photos a lot. It's generally the only way I take street photos because like I say, I much prefer being slightly further away. And I think you can get some nice candid shots like that as well. So I headed out into the kind of Christmas lights, kind of Christmas market, the streets, all the kind of stuff, 70 to 200, A7 IV. There's lots of stuff that you can get with this. Now, obviously first up, the main advantage of using a lens like this is you can be further away from people, which means that you're not up in their face, you're getting those candid shots, which I think can really give you a nice feel to a photo. With a 70 to 200 as well, there's a lot of room there to zoom in, zoom out, and control your background a lot by actually using the zoom. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, if you zoom in and walk further away to keep your subject the same size, your background is gonna change in terms of how much is there. That means you can really control what is included and what is not included in the background. You also have much more opportunity for separation of subject and background. So f2.8 obviously allows you to get a shallow depth of field, but by zooming in, you can get that lens compression and actually really get some good separation from subject and background. You're probably gonna get spotted more than you would with a pancake lens because this is not super, super subtle, but I really do think it allows you a lot of opportunity to get some great photos. Something else that I like about the shallow depth of field at f2.8 and of course the compression of using a zoom lens like this is being able to shoot through things, whether that's crowds, plants, lights, whatever it might be, you can really hone in on one specific subject. So whether that's someone sitting alone in a coffee shop, whether that's someone walking through crowds, you can blur out the foreground and the background to get a lot of separation. That allows you a huge amount of room for storytelling with your photos. Now, while I totally appreciate that street photography is very, very subjective, in what it's able to create and what it's able to evoke. For me, it is all about those kind of stories that you can tell. It's all about the, the emotion, the feeling, what's going on in people's head, what are the people doing, stuff like that, as opposed to those kind of snapshots that you get, which I don't always love. But when you can really evoke a feeling from a photo, emotion, you know, something like that, that can be a big thing. And I personally find that a lot easier to do with a zoom lens like this, because I can really hone in on specific subjects. And for me, having a subject of your photo is such a big part of all photography really, but street photography as well. I like being able to actually tell a story with the street photo. And I think, for me at least, it's easier to do that with a longer lens. And of course, it doesn't hurt that I don't have to get up close to people. Not only because of COVID, not only because of all that, I didn't like doing it before then anyway. 
I hate getting up in people's faces to take photos. It's just, it's just not my style. And that means this is a lot easier. I'd rather be spotted, you know, 30 feet away with a big old lens like this than be right up in people's faces taking photos. I also think that it allows you to capture more opportunistic moments that might be slightly further away. If you see something really of interest further away, you can zoom in immediately, right? You can shoot through stuff to get to that moment without missing it because you've got a 16 mil lens on and it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna be part of it. Now, of course, the A7 IV as well, being a slightly higher resolution camera, really does allow me to crop my photos. I would do this with my a7 III, which I'm filming on right now as well, but the a7 IV being 33 megapixels just really does allow me to crop photos without losing too much detail, which means I can focus on capturing the moment and I can reframe things a little bit in post as well. So, of course, there's no right or wrong answer here, but if I had to answer my own question, does a 70 to 200 work as a street photography lens? My answer would be absolutely yes for the style of street photography that I would take. I don't take those pancake lens kind of photos. So if that's your style, if that's what you're into, then no would be the answer. This would not work as, <laughs> as a street photography lens. But for me, for someone who likes being further away, for someone who likes shooting a longer shot, I also just like the look of longer lenses anyway. I just like that lens compression and all that kind of stuff. This is actually ideal for me as a street photography lens. I think, you know, you could push it and go for a 200 to 600, but that really is getting too out of hand in terms of what is subtle and what is just ridiculous to have out on the street. I think this probably walks the line. It's about as big as I think you could get away with as a street photography lens. And even then, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, are you mad? Are you actually mad? But I quite like it. And to be honest, I've shot quite a few times with the 70 to 200 street photography and I've had a, a really good time doing it. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because it's potentially quite a divisive one. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section. Like I said, no right or wrong answers as far as I'm concerned, but I'd love to hear why you think this is a stupid thing to talk about or why you think actually, you know what? Yes, I'm all about it. I'd love to hear all that down in the comments. Of course, links to all the stuff you use for this video and of course, all this stuff down in the description so you can go and check that out for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video because there's new videos every day through to the 24th of December. I will see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.